guys, we are at part three of this three-part series on evil death metal riffs to this track that I wrote uh, called Binding Spells. So I hope you're enjoying the series so far. I will have links to all of the videos in the series in the description of this video, so do check that out after you check this video out. Uh, but yeah, we've got actually a few different riffs in this video here. Uh, there are two core riffs, but you noticed you heard some harmonizing parts. So I want to share that with you in this video as well. Let's get right to the lesson real quick. If you're on my Patreon, you guys have the tabs and the backing tracks. So make sure you download those, okay? So we're going to start out with, um, it's kind of got like this, this just killer like priest meets maiden, but just a little bit more wicked, if you will. And it's like this. <laughs> Okay, so we'll break that down note for note. It's really not that bad of a riff. Uh, you've got like one constant. Uh, you've got the constant open D string that you're palm muting, you're going back to. We'll slow this down, obviously. And again, there's there's a harmony to this as well that I'm going to share with you. That's going to be pretty cool. So what we're doing here is we're, uh, again, we've got the open D string and our fretted notes are going to be on the G string here. So let's just play this really slow rather than me calling out each fret. Let me just slow things down. We'll put the tabs up here for you as well. <laughs> Now remember, you can always rewind. It's like we're at Blockbuster, the old school days. Be kind, rewind. But you can always go back and, and just go over these different parts, okay? So let's speed that up just a little bit, and then we'll go over the harmony part, okay? <laughs> Now, the harmonizing part only comes in halfway through that. So basically, you guys know I've said this in prior videos, I've got two guitars. I always record two rhythms and a hard pan each, okay? I'll, I'll record the first guitar, the main guitar, a hard pan that left, and I'll record a second guitar track and hard pan it right. And what that does, it just gives you a, a more lively sound, in my opinion. And some people say, well, can't you just, like, you know, duplicate the guitar? Well, no, that just raises the volume. You want to actually play. Even if you're playing the same thing, you know, both guitars playing the same thing, you want a different guitar playing that, a different track, because there are these little nuances that you, that you capture in between the two guitars, and that's what brings the mix to life. Just a little note there, but halfway through that is when that second guitar starts to branch off and harmonize. So what I want to do before we go through it with the tabs, I want you to hear what that sounds like. So, so listen to this. <laughs> Now, I went through this in parts one and two of this series as well, and I've, of course I've, I've covered this in other videos, but really all I'm doing to simplify this, I'm just moving up two steps. That's it. Not two frets, but two steps, okay? So we're starting here on, uh, we're starting here on the G string, the eighth fret. <laughs> Okay, so two steps up from in being in this key, right, is going to be this. So this right here, that's your main guitar, your harmonizing guitar is doing this. Now, rather than going through the entire process of, of how I figured that out, just remember two steps. And that's what I like to do. Um, I mean, this this one harmony you can do. You can do other harmonies as well. What I encourage you to do is record the first guitar 
then you know open up a second track and or, or play through an amp or whatever right and just play along with that first track and start harmonizing and see what sounds good to you to me the best things come out uh not trying to figure something out mathematically per se or, or even with theory and not that theory is a bad thing you can you can definitely do that that might actually make it faster for you but i prefer just to experiment because even if the theory said, well, this is, you know, how you harmonize, well, I might find something else beyond that just messing around. That's just my opinion. Let's throw up the tabs to what the second guitar track, the harmonizing guitar is doing. And again, it's only during that second half, okay? <laughs> Alright, so part two of the riff, I'm going to play this out in the open here and then we'll break everything down. We start out with what I call powerful power chords. It might even sound like I'm down tuned. Listen to this. And I've shared this in prior videos, many videos in fact, uh, but all I'm doing is playing a B and a C power chord on the A and D strings there. However, take the B power chord, we're on frets two and four A and D strings. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to bar that same fret I start with on the E string. So we're gonna bar the second fret on the E and A, and of course, continue with the power chord, the fourth fret D string, right? So that's gonna give you a heavier sound, just like a really like medium beefy sound there. Basically that note that you're starting with is the lower octave of that second note of the power chord. So here's your B. Okay, we're starting with the lower octave of that second note. So we do that with the B and the C power chords. Now I've got this really cool little fast downstroke riff here. And I'm playing this with power chords, okay? Except for there's one time where I just palm mute the open E string while I'm doing this, but here it is. Now, you could play that with single notes. Now, I'm going to throw up the tabs for all this, by the way. That's coming up very, very quickly here. Uh, but you could play that with single notes and it sound like this. Okay. But I like how it sounds with the power chords. Like I always tell you, I know this is a riff that I wrote for you guys here. Uh, but I encourage you to play... Play it however you feel it sounds best to you. That's why I put these lessons out here. I want you to expand on them. If you like the single notes better, please, by all means, play that. Uh, if you like the power chords, that meatiness, meatiness of the power chords better, then, then play that. You might venture out and play something completely different. That's okay. It's the concept that I want to share in these videos. So we do that. Let me throw the tabs up for that part here, okay? After that part, we go into some death metal tremolo picking here, and we're going to be on the A string. We're going to play this riff, and you may remember this riff from the very first lesson. This is part three of a three-part series, so you may remember this exact riff here. So this is kind of like an Easter egg, and I like to do that sometimes. You hear something in, in one song, or in a part of a song, rather, then later you hear that same thing somewhere else, like, oh, okay, that was cool. It kind of takes you back, but it's part of something else that's different, if that makes sense. In any case, here Here's how the riff sounds together, okay? Okay. 
okay we put that together and now we do the exact same thing the second time around this riff repeats itself uh, and then we're going to play that same riff however that tremolo picking riff we just did just four notes not too bad but we're going to play that on the e string instead of the a string so it's going to go like this Now let's run through that whole piece together, then I'll share the harmonizing part with you because we've got some harmonies on those tremolo picked notes, okay? So here's the entire riff. Now, the harmonies for those tremolo picked notes that we did, let's go over that. First of all, I want you to hear what this sounds like. I like for you to hear the guitars just by themselves in the recording. Remember, I've got one guitar panned hard left, one panned right. So listen to this real quick and then we'll play those parts. <laughs> So we'll just go over the harmonizing notes for those two parts there, okay? And I'll put the tabs up for you as well. Uh, but the core riff, again, is this. So really simple. I just kind of count up two whole steps for this particular situation here. Uh, now, what I will say is of course you can you can think of theory right you can go down that road here and say okay well if this is this note here right for example we're playing an e flat here right we're starting out in e flat then we go to a d then we go to a b and a c on the a string well what would that relationship be if you're playing the third note above that which would be your, your tenor harmony for example okay so you could go that route if you want what i'm doing is i'm going down to the tenth fret i'm moving two whole steps up so instead of playing this i'm playing this Okay, and that's the same exact kind of configuration, if you will, right? If we're playing the core riff up here, we've got a half step in between, okay? These, these first two notes and another half step in between the other two notes. So same configuration, right? Uh, but that harmonizes well. What I like to do is just play that core riff and then, you know, record that track, right? And then go back and pick up the second guitar and just, just play around with some harmonizing notes. What sounds cool? In fact, I put, I think it's a YouTube Shorts I put out there where I played this riff, the core riff, right? And I had a second guitar harmonizing in different parts, right? In different spots. So the first harmony was what you heard, this right here. But then I kept moving it up, right? So I had the one guitar playing the core riff and then I kept moving the second guitar up. And that's the beauty of this style of music, this death metal and, and kind of like getting into the black metal style of playing here, is you can play around with so many things and just make notes that normally wouldn't sound great together. You can just make them sound really cool. Now remember the second time around, we do that same riff, but we play it on the E string instead of the A. So we'll hop over to the E and play the exact same thing. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so you've got that down. So let me go through this one more time. I'm not throwing any tabs up. You guys can go back and see those. But this is the core riff for that last piece. <laughs> The second guitar will play this. All right, guys, time for our guitar chat. But real quick, if you do not have my free metal riffs and licks practice guide, make sure you download a copy of that. There's a link in the description. Uh, this guide has literally helped thousands of my YouTube subscribers, and I give it away to all of my subscribers. So thank you guys so much for being here. If you have the practice guide, metal riffs and licks, I do have online courses. I have a guitar course uh, for beginners wanting to learn heavy metal style of playing. I also have metal riff master. But I encourage you, links for all that's in the description. But I encourage you first, get my free stuff first. Go through the guide, uh, watch some more videos on my YouTube channel. Do all that first and then decide if my courses are right for you. Remember guys, I've got all three of the videos in this death metal series in the description of this video. I'd really like to know how you liked this series. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Uh, you know, were the lessons too long? Should I shorten these up a little bit? Uh, I know I've had a lot of beginner videos out there on YouTube because that's where we all start and there's so many people coming onto the internet every day learning to play guitar so i wanted to have some stuff out there for folks that are just you know just getting into it inspired them and and hopefully help them learn a little faster but i want to put some more advanced stuff out there you know or at least intermediate stuff out there too and that's kind of what the series was uh real quick a <laughs> short note about this song i know I went over this in, in part one, but inspirations, man. Uh, Drew from the Drinking with Drew show, he heavily inspired this. Uh, he turned me onto a band called Forbidden, and he's this is really right up his alley. So thanks, Drew. You guys have seen me on his podcast before. Really cool, really cool show. Uh, Brad Mater of Must Not Kill, his playing style inspired this. Ben Ash, former Carcass. Um, and then now he's with a band called Strigoi. So all three of those guys have been on this channel. One person I didn't mention who was, who was very important, uh, his style, and I actually played on his latest record, is my good friend and my business partner for Metal Mastermind, Ken Candelis. He has this uh, cinematic metal project called Homeric. So he's got that out there now. A beautiful album, just really cool, definitely different. I played uh, all the guitars on his album, and man, it was challenging because I was playing stuff all over the place, kind of like this, but along with his orchestration, which was very challenging. Uh, but I want to give all those guys shout outs for inspiring this riff. And I think most of you know, what, like I, I wrote this riff, again, I'm calling it Binding Spells, and maybe it'll come into something else at some point. Uh, but I, I wrote it when I was testing out one of the amp sounds, it was Bagrin uh, Digital's Amp Knob BDH. So, um, I'll throw a video if you guys want to check out the tones, more of the tones that I got from here, you'll hear this riff again. Uh, if you guys haven't caught the, the prior lesson yet, part two, throw that up there right there. And of course, part one will be down there for you. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this, this lesson, this series. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Uh, as always, keep it metal and keep playing music.